Whoa there, partner. Where do you think you're going? Can I... Can I help you? Does that belong to you? Of course it belongs to me. They're mine. It's all... It's all mine. Oh, is that so? Uh... Yeah. No. What's the problem? Let's see some credentials. Sure. Sure. Here's my identification. Well, this checks out. Wait, what? I should ask you for a second form of identification. Uh, yeah. Huh? But, it's not required, so... Move along. Wait. Really? Yeah. Get. Go. Get. Okay. What up, Geek Squad? So, just because crypto mining is not as big as it was several months ago, or this time last year, especially after the Ethereum merge, doesn't mean that you can start slacking on your security if you're still mining. I wanted to put a little video together to talk about some security best practices and ways that you can better protect yourself using Hive OS. Disclaimer here, I'm not a cybersecurity professional. I don't do that for a living, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I, I hope you got the reference. I didn't really stay at a hotel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. This is the kind of content that you want to see. And of course, hit the thumbs up. Every little bit helps, right? This here is the Hive OS security guide. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below, but this is directly on the Hivon site. Everything you need to know about safe cryptocurrency mining in 2022 even though it was put out in 2021. Where do we start? Start with Hive OS is what they say. Of course, they're gonna say start with their own platform, right? Equipment safety needs to be considered in advance. First steps beginning with registering a personal account with Hive OS. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You set up an account with Hive OS. Now, now they say, of course, and this is with any application is, you don't wanna use the same login credentials that you would use for other things like email and banking and whatnot, because if one set of credentials gets compromised, there's a possibility that all of your accounts could be compromised. Use strong passwords, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, special characters, all that stuff. But the big thing here is 2FA. 99% of enterprise breaches could have been stopped with multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication in place. 99%, keep that in mind. Now, how do you set up 2FA? Well, um, I went ahead and created a dummy account with HiveOS using not my name, my main stuff. If you don't have it enabled already and you don't enable it when you start your account, you can enable it now by going into uh, the name up here in the corner, the name of your set up your account name, going to account, and then over here to authenticator, flip the little button, which is gonna tell you to, uh, your confirmation is required, and it's going to email you a 2FA code to start, and then confirm from here, you've got your QR code that using something like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, one of those um, auth apps, scan your QR code, it'll register and do its thing, and then it'll pop up a code. You put your code in here and hit enable 2FA. That's it. Now, the next time that you log into HiveOS, you're gonna have to put in your 2FA. If you only log into it on your local machine and on your phone, things like that, typically it doesn't ask for that 2FA again until cache is cleared, like your browser history goes away, um, or there's some type of change on the network, like if you're not using a static IP um, and your, your dynamic IP address, your public IP address changes, which is kind of how it is with um, cable internet and broadband access. Um, in addition to that, it says to back up this code. The best way is to make a screenshot and print it. If you lose the code, then you won't be able to restore access to an account in case of a lost authenticating device like your phone. Scan the QR code with your camera and enter the code below. Boom, that's it. 2FA is on. Moving on. 
VPNs. So why would you use a VPN in mining? VPN masks your IP address and location securing online connections and bypasses firewalls and geo-blocking among other benefits. But it doesn't come with possible downsides. VPN can cause slower network speeds, connection throttling, lag, and thus increase your stale shares. So keep that in mind as well. Um, they do have a dedicated tutorial explaining how to set up a VPN connection. OpenVPN has a really good free tier, not sponsored. Although if they want to sponsor me, hit me up. You get, I think it's three devices for free using OpenVPN. So um, if that interests you, check it out. Um, I'll try to remember to leave a link for that as well. Now, remote access. The worker can be accessed remotely via multiple ways, including SSH, hive shell, shell in a box, and teleconsole. I'm just gonna talk about my farm for a second. We're gonna dive into one of the rigs in my farm. We'll, uh, we'll look at Megatron. In order to get into the miner, you can do something like remote access, start hive shell, uh, and that would get you into the miner screen. Now, under settings, uh, you can scroll all the way down. So by default, VPN and VNC access are turned off. Typically, SSH access is turned on. What I do is turn that off and turn on shell in a box. Uh, SSH is secure shell basically. So it's uh, remote access giving system administration privileges um, and is a secure way to access a thing. That's SSH in general. Hive OS has the shell in a box feature so you can log into it directly using the IP address of the miner. Back here at the main screen, if you come up here just under where um, your hash rates and whatnot are, you can go to shell in a box or you can you can see here it's got the ip address if you hover hover over it um, you connect with shell in a box typically this will pop up your connection is not private go to advanced and proceed and then your um, username is user and your default password is just the number one what you're going to want to do here is change your default password just change it change it to literally anything else because if someone does get into your network and they're able to get to the login screen of your rigs, like we just saw, and they and you have default settings, default credentials in place, you just gave them keys to the kingdom. So how do you get around that? Well, you'll log in with shell in a box, get to your minor screen here. Here in your minor screen, you're going to type the command hive dash P-A-S-S-W-D space set and then your new password um please for the love of god don't actually make your password password i'm only doing it here as an example vnc password changed selectively user password changed successfully so if we go to if we log out of our screen here and we go back uh, and we type user as the default login and the default password as one Login incorrect. Great. Put in the correct password and you're in. Uh, moving on to port forwarding. If you have a static IP address on your rigs, you assign 192.whatever to your specific rig. You may want to look into port forwarding in your uh, router or your firewall, whatever hands out DHCP. Um, but if you have dynamic IP addresses, it's not necessary. DNS over HTTPS. I'm not sure about that, to be honest. If you know more about that, let me know in the comments section below. So this is not um, enabled here on my on my setup, apparently. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. And I'm in the middle of this uh, 30 coins in 30 days thing. So I don't really want to mess with the setting, this specific setting at the moment and screw something up and go down and screw up my project. But I will be looking at this um, after this is all said and done, because that's interesting to me. I, I didn't know that was a thing. Look at that, you learn something new every day. The more you know. Moving on. Really, this is more of a, you know, housekeeping thing. Um, how to prevent phishing. Don't click links. Don't respond to emails that look funky, you know. Check the sender who's sending you an email. Just about every email service you can drop down or hover over and take a closer look, you know, it'll populate who is actually emailing you. 
So if somebody says they're from community or from the Hivon team and they send you an email and it's something at Yahoo or at Gmail or at another mail service, um, even you know, if they spoof it with a hive on, you know, specific domain, there's there's ways you can check in uh, headers of, you know, where it actually originates from and things like that. But just best practices is um, don't click shit. You're not gonna get compromised if you don't click shit. Yeah, like it says here, kind of best practices, don't reuse passwords, don't share passwords and login um, credentials with other sites. Keep you a password notebook nearby. That's the safest way. Um, you can use something like a LastPass, some type of password manager. You probably don't want to put it in your browser because those can get compromised very easily as well. Well, very easily. Those can be compromised. Better safe than sorry? Well, this is definitely not the end-all be-all of cybersecurity or network security to keep you and your network and your devices and your users safe. Um, but it's a good starting point. Uh, maybe in a future video, we can go deeper down the network rabbit hole, review things like DNS spoofing and traffic redirection um, at the router level. Um, leave a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see some more videos like that uh, that are more geared towards um, IT best practices as a whole instead of not necessarily directly towards mining. If you found this information useful at all, um, hit that thumbs up button. Help to get the video out for more people to see. Consider subscribing to the channel. Join the Geek Squad. We'd love to have you. And of course, thanks for watching.